Hello. Good morning. We have a few regrets this morning. Um, we'll be missing Lynn and Cornelia, but that's by and large, I expect everybody else. So give it a second. Oh, Liz, one housekeeping note. Um, the only SIG that didn't have slides today was a uh, contributor strategy. So if they're here, I'll maybe push them to the end. Not sure. Okay. Is there a placeholder for them or are we? I've dropped them from the deck, um, but there's the, the placeholder is if I see them, I'll flag you down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking if there's a placeholder, I'll see it and I will remember to chat. But, uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep track. How's that? I'll just let you okay. like, you know. Maintain course and speed. Brilliant. 
What do you think? Shall we uh, give it a whirl? Let's do it. All right. Welcome everyone to today's TOC meeting. Uh, all the usual preamble, you've made it. And I'm sure Amy will update that. So mostly we are here for SIG updates. And um, before we get into SIG updates, do, Amy, do you want to say anything about the renaming of SIGs? Is uh, it's still in voting. That is what I am saying about it. Is it still, the vote is still open over in GitHub. Okay, the vote is still open. <laughs> Fine. Good. I didn't know whether the vote where the vote was. Yep. But, yeah. nope, that, that is where that is. The vote is still open. So uh, if anybody has strong feelings about that, please go ahead and, and uh, I can certainly drop that into chat in a bit in here. Um, but that's that's where we are on that. All righty. Thank you very much. So looks like first up is, oh, um, it's a, there's a question in chat that question. wants to know about like the uh the the thinking around renaming of SIGs. Yeah, so uh we had a discussion on it, I think it was the last public meeting, if I recall correctly. And the idea is to avoid confusion with Kubernetes SIGs, and Kubernetes SIGs got there first, so it seems only fair for CNCF SIGs to come up with a different name. And uh the uh, name under proposal is technical advisory groups, I believe. And there's a bit more detail and discussion in the GitHub issue. Also of note, we talked a bit about the possibility of holding votes on GitHub rather than on the mailing list. And we're using this particular vote as an experiment to see how that whole process goes and, and how people like that. So I guess once that vote is closed, we should put something on the agenda to just discuss whether we liked that format for voting. And the link is up in chat, so. All right, so moving on to SIG app delivery. Yeah, hello everyone. It almost feels in school, always have to go first because you have the first letter in the alphabet. Um, so some project updates um, on our side. So there's a lot going on now again on uh, the project front. Uh, Argo requested to move to graduation, so this is um, an interesting one for us in app delivery because it's actually the first project that wants to move to uh, graduation within like, app delivery. There were already um, some comments, especially regarding CI batches from uh, Justin. I think they should be resolved now because they didn't have CI batches on all of the projects uh, updated. Um, and I started to engage in the conversation, obviously, about other obvious things like security review and so forth. Um, but for, like, as the other sick people are here, if anybody has done or moved their project to graduation already and can give us some hints and tips, they are greatly appreciated. Obviously. Second project, we had a presentation from Gimlet, IO and OneChart. Um, for those of you who don't know these projects, um, they call themselves a GitOps tool. We had a longer discussion about this. So one chart is, you, you could think of it more or less as a super powered um, Helm chart. Then depending what configuration you get in, you get different things out of it from a uh, simple service and deployment all the way to like pretty sophisticated configuration um, and makes it just simpler to um, not having to understand Helm and all the, the market and, um, Kubernetes markup in detail, and Gimlet then is a graphic tool that more or less lets you fill out the proper values file in there. Uh, interestingly, how we came across them, we had from the last uh, KubeCon, this Potato Head project, where we have like an examples for most of the delivery tools in there. They posted an examples. Uh, I looked at the tool, that this is kind of interesting and might be helpful to what a lot of people are doing, especially as we see more people using standardized templates and then just let developers fill out um, what they want to fill out and the rest is handled automatically, like everything obviously from deployments all the way to um, OPA policies and so forth. So um, interesting project there that got in, in there. Litmus uh, will uh, actually tomorrow present an update and they also want to move to incubation. The last one was just added by Harry in here. Localhost uh, is looking for sandbox and they will also be presenting. So localhost being a cloud native um, development uh, in environment, more or less. Uh, on the working groups um, that we have, the operator working group, um, 
the work is heavily underway for the operator white paper and by the next in the next two weeks we expect to see the first version uh, so the first um, bits and pieces are starting to appear right now it's all obviously on github already what's there um, the GitOps working group, no update uh, from them so far. And then on, on other activities that are not in here, there's some organizational updates uh, here. So um, we have to do also some um, organizational work in the, in the working group. Obviously we had Harry move from, into the TUC, which means that he's then obviously stepping down as the co-chair for SIG app delivery. Uh, Brian is uh, stepping down as well. And as we have some, uh, then also TUC liaison changes coming up, there is some organizational work in uh, app delivery that needs to be taken care of going forward. And obviously we will reach out to the proper people on how we can get new, especially the coaches in there. I think the TUC liaisons um, are pretty obvious who we want to keep. So obviously Harry offered himself already, which is quite obvious. Uh, another one would obviously be Cor Cornelia. But for co-chairs, uh, we would have some internal candidates, but obviously need to follow the official voting and uh, proposal process there to um, get new people supporting us on, on that work front. So that's it from SIG App Delivery. Uh, there was one question with this. Skinnet and one chart are one project. Um, yeah, they're one project. It's... Um, yeah, like in that being more or less the UI to it, pretty much. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. With the co-chairs, uh, do you have like candidates uh, or, or potential candidates or, or are you going to need some help putting out uh, the word that co-chairs are? I think we should do a mixture of both. Um, I obviously see the people who are currently working, especially in the operator working group, being uh, pretty active. So I want to add active. That is also a good, a good chance maybe to bring some uh, new people into the mix for those that are interested. Uh, what I would especially be interested in to get people from the end user community into um, app delivery so that at least have one end user related seats because right now or up to now it was even mostly focused on, on, on vendors and especially in this group we should have at least have one end user representation there. Right. I also agree that um, we may want to look at uh, whether there are folks from end user companies want to join the SIG as chairs or TLs. I think at least it will be uh, great if you can help a little bit here. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to see um, maybe at, at least one co-chair here to co-work with um, Alois in the future. Uh, I, I'm still working in on only seek after the various things, but uh, I need to spend some time on the TOC side. So I think it's good to have a new candidate here. Uh, another thing I want to bring up is Flux incubation. It's right now under voting, uh, but it has been uh, taken for a while. So uh, maybe TOC want to take a look at uh, this project and uh, uh, vote if you haven't done that before. Good reminder, thank you. Anyone else got any questions for SIG app delivery? Okay, thank you. Let's move on to what's next? SIG, SIG network. Okay. Who do we have? Liz, Liz you said SIG network, your favorite SIG. I, I heard, I heard. Uh, I heard I You're heard all my favorites, all yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, fair enough. Very good. Well, uh, so in SIG Network, we have uh, been having um, a fair bit of participation over the last uh, three or four times that we've met. So it's been, um, it's been pretty nice. There's uh, a lot of the activity and the participation has been um, on initiatives within one of the working groups, the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, so we, we, we um, have generally take care of some, some uh, SIG network uh, business relatively quickly, um, in part because we've really just had one outstanding project for a while um, under review. And that project is, well, the, the project formerly known as Ambassador. Um, it's 
you know, now known as uh, emissary ingress. And so it is uh, proposed for incubation and it is out for uh, public review, I think as of uh, a, a day or two ago or here very recently. So that's a call for all of you on the phone and not on the phone to go um, show your support or, or lack thereof for um, emissary ingress. Please go out and Please go out and vote for ambassador, I guess is what I'm saying. Get out and vote. All right, so that, that's um, SIG Network. Uh, apologies, I didn't mean to um, make confusion there. Of a lot of the activities that have been going on in SIG Network have been in the Service Mesh Working Group. There are four or five initiatives within that group. So just as a quick recap, um, about, I think it was um, three weeks or so ago, the group went through a review of service mesh patterns. There's about 60 of them that have been described about the functionality of service meshes and um, how, how people can take, what, what the patterns are for using those, those functions. There was a demonstration of the open application model and meshery um, demonstrating some of the, a couple of those patterns. Um, the, the following week, we ended up doing a review of Get Nighthawk, um, uh, Nighthawk, the load generator for that's under the Envoy project. Some exciting new features coming to that project. And Get Nighthawk is an attempt to, well, get Nighthawk into people's hands to, more easily. This last time that we, uh, yeah, I may be getting confused on the which, which of the sequence was here, but um, this upcoming time that we'll meet will be on um, service mesh performance, SMP, and really probably um, a push to propose it for a sandbox. I think that's been an outstanding item for a while. There's a couple of um, fine folks from, from Intel who've been um, helping advance the discussion on SMP and are showing um, support there. And, uh, and I think we'll be encouraged to um, um, do even more do even more with that specification as it heads toward sandbox. Other items that we discussed inside the service mesh working group are um, well from the SMI team or SMI um, maintainers there's been an ask for uh, there's been an ask for some assistance on feedback I think both on service the use of service meshes so a little bit of a, a call and ask of the SIG to either collaborate on, if there's an upcoming rate end user radar on service mesh to either collaborate there or to uh, try to facilitate a, a different, another survey, uh, a more in-depth survey focused on service mesh things. That uh, SMI, the, the maintainers group is looking for feedback on where to, where to focus. Um, there's been a recent proposal to, for them to focus on multi-cluster. Um, today, if you're familiar with SMI, it covers four different, has four different specifications covering um, different functionality that, that you can use a service mesh for. Um, and that is yet to cover multi-cluster things. So uh, that's, uh, th that's about it. I think you know, we're lining up a, a deep dive for, um, KubeCon EU. That is going to be one interesting end user radar. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, SMI should fill in, this is from Josh in the chat, SMI should fill in all of the required single cluster functionality before moving on to multi-cluster, but I'm not working on it, so that's really up to them. Do you want to comment on the parallelism or serialization of that? I think I've, um, generically that's an agreeable statement. Like well, that makes you know, a lot of intuitive sense to me that you would, um, I, the, the group or knowing a little bit of the background here, the group is responding to um, asks from people who are showing up to the meeting saying, um, hey, this, I think there was one user in particular that showed up and said, hey, Istio is refactoring how it's approaching um, some of the way that it does multi-cluster. And that approach doesn't necessarily work for that, that particular user, the way that they've deployed Kubernetes, the way that they manage namespaces that had to do with 
the fact that they're reusing the same namespace across multiple clusters. And Istio's multi-cluster was expecting that namespaces are globally unique. And so it, anyway, I think that the group to, to respond to a well-placed comment from Josh is, I think the, the group is more or less responding to, to, to people that are showing up and asking questions about multi-cluster support. But it's a good, it's a good point. Like, there's a there's a number of other specs to enhance specs around. You know, I won't I won't go through the specs. There's a lot of specs to enhance, uh, new ones to create as well. So, for single cluster. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Thank you, Lee. All right. Sig observability. Who do we have? and uh, kind of hey. ask me to uh, give some quick status on the SIG observability. So I will try to be quick. Um, the main focus right now is um, the collaboration with Open Telemetry on the incubation proposal that was proposed a couple of weeks ago. We have huge amount of good discussions on, on technical levels, adoptions and so on. And um, the project is such such large that um, yeah it takes some time, but uh, I would like to invite everyone as well to um, join us, comment on the on the document we are um, creating, and and kind of give your opinion and also some suggestions for uh, you know how to make open telemetry better. So um, kind of this is our main focus right now um, we also work on some white paper for observability i forgot to add that to the slides sorry and kind of related to this incubation i would have an open question to to the toc and maybe you know to community here is that um, open telemetry is a very unique project right um, we usually had um, you know all our project that moves from sandbox moves to sandbox first and then to incubation and graduation being somewhat uh, ready and uh, ready in terms of all the core um, components, all the core you know, goals of the project well, were, def were defined, adopted, fulfilled. So we could, it was easy to assess this, right? Right now, open telemetry is very unique on this field because tracing is very well adopted, very well um, you know, constructed. The APIs are solid and you know, very much used on cloud native. Um, solutions, but other t other signals like metrics and logics logging are kind of starting up, and you know getting this motion, but uh, not getting there yet. It's not like stable and adopted and very well aware. So I wonder, you know, if it's a requirement for incubation or maybe only for graduation. So um, this is like an open question. We we kind of um, the main question right now have I guess. So uh, we would love feedback on that. But maybe before this, uh, let me give. Uh, yeah, the upcoming agenda items, so something on future we want to focus on. There is white paper on tracing side for the very beginners level um, kind of guide how to start with, uh, with an open tele telemetry and other tracing projects. And we are talking about streaming APIs and how to observe those. So um, yeah, that's the status from the observability side. I feel like we, um, Go on. we, sorry, I feel like we should probably try to um, at least touch a bit more on this, um, on this question of hard requirements for um, incubation. I mean, yeah, incubation is supposed to be a high bar. It's supposed to be, you know, <laughs> the 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 point where we do the majority of due diligence exactly exactly and, and sorry for bringing that up to now i think richie asked me also to say that he was supposed to send some email uh, about this but he forgot um so yeah let's let's discuss this i, I feel it's very it's very fuzzy um at this point um and there might be some suggestions you know there, there might be some recommendation we can make. Um, I know open telemetry really want to be consistent across multiple signals. So they don't want to incubate like one project, one part of the project and others uh, maybe later. So uh, yeah, there is this question around incubation here.
I guess my, I mean, this is just me and my sort of gut feel, you know, to get to incubation, we have to feel that the project is pretty, you know, pretty strongly de-risked and pretty, you know, on its, on its path to graduation. And I wonder whether, If, if there are some parts here that are really still experimental, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what service we're, we're providing to end users to move it to incubation. Yeah, I'm happy to provide a little bit of context. So there, there's two different aspects to open telemetry. One is like the core components. So think like instrumentation libraries that you add to your application. And the second is a collector component. So think like an agent you deploy that collects and processes data. So those core concepts exist in open telemetry today and are, are leveraged pretty extensively. The, the, the part is on top of that are the data signals. So think like traces, metrics, and logs. Uh, so tracing actually reached stability in open telemetry and is being rolled out across the instrumentation libraries right now. Metrics are in beta and will reach uh, stability later on this year. And logs are alpha. They're experimental at this point, with the goal being to provide those uh, probably by, by next year. Uh, there, there's a lot of adoption on the tracing side already from the instrumentation library perspective. And on the collector side, there's adoption for both traces and metrics. Um, but the, the project is actually quite large, like it's not a single focused or single component or single repository project, it's, it's pretty uh, dispersed. Uh, thus, kind of the question around the different signals. And to be fair, these are not the only three signals, more are going to be added to open telemetry over time. Uh, so the project will kind of expand and scope, uh, but this is kind of the, the initial focus for, for the project. So maybe one way to think about this is a little bit like how new features get added to, you know, existing very mature projects. You know, we can take Kubernetes as an example, and you know there are alpha features, there are beta features. That's totally acceptable in a graduated project. Um, I suppose there might be questions about how those are signaled to users, whether the, you know. It, if um, I mean, I'm a very hypothetical example, suppose that the logging part actually never stabilized and, and, you know, turned out to be an experiment that failed. I'm not saying it will. I'm just posing that as a hypothesis. That doesn't necessarily mean that the whole, you know, open telemetry can still be successful regardless in much the same way that Kubernetes is successful, despite the fact that some alpha features end up getting deprecated, you know, that's, that's okay. So I guess maybe some of this is around the, the signaling and the pathways that the project takes for these different maturity. I'm kind of thinking out loud, but the different sub projects could have different maturity. Yeah. Levels. And we're thinking about it similarly, right? So Semver is followed for the different signals themselves. Uh, so kind of a similar model to Kubernetes. And yes, additional things will be added. Uh, so you have to be able to mark like what you can depend on versus what will have breaking changes, for example. So that's the approach that the project's taking currently. Okay. So for Bartek and the SIG observability people, does that kind of and, and does anybody think this is wildly off the mark to say that it's, you know, not every single thing in a project has to be, uh, you know, wildly adopted and, and widely adopted for the project to potentially be ready for incubation? And does anybody think that's a terrible idea and a terrible analogy? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Uh, um, just just from my side, I think you know, per project doesn't need to be perfect. That's for sure. There are experimental things. However, my per perception was, and and you know, maybe I'm wrong, is that you know that the signals, observability signals, are kind of you know have equal importance. Let's say so. If logging and and metrics are not yet well, not yet defined. This is like two thirds of the project being not defined. And maybe it's just my perception that has to be changed. Uh, so that's why this analogy to Kubernetes might not work. Yeah, that's, that's my only I, problem with that. Yeah, I, I 
believe our requirement for a project moving from sandbox to um, incubation, one of our major requirements is that they have to have three users um, uh, with it being implied that those are production users. Um, so, um, and, and I, think, I think this is a good example of why that's still a good benchmark um, because, you know, is too much undefined, is enough defined or whatever. Honestly, the users can decide that, right? If people, if there is enough there for people to be using this in their own enterprises, then it's not too much that's undefined. Um, if there isn't, then it is. Yeah, and I just shared an adopters link. Um, there are definitely uh, end users that are adopting it in production today. Just the thought on this, because we've come across similar sort of circumstances in um, in SIG storage. I think we probably need to differentiate between um, subcomponents or standalone bits of a project versus integral bits of a project, right? Because you know, if we use Kubernetes as the analogy, um, having some function or some feature which is alpha or beta is one thing. Having an entire sub-project that may or may not be usable or production worthy is, is probably another also because some of those things, if they're not actually defined, may also have dependencies on other things or IP policy issues or all sorts of other things because they just haven't been ironed out yet. Um, so, I would probably caution about, about, you know, if a project has a dozen repos, you probably want to actually specify which repos or which components are specifically joining as a CNCF project. Uh, everything in the organization is a CNCF project and the IP policy applies to everything that's moved, that's inside the repo, regardless of what status it's in. There's no there's no bits of this org or in or out of the project. Think right, so. okay. Yeah, I think this is something like we, we ran across this problem also in, in SIG app delivery when we, for example, the Argo submission, which was a pretty massive suite of different sub projects that were in a different state. And just, just recently with the current flag submission, which Harry brought up right now, where they're currently in between a full version one to, to version two while I'm wanting to move in this case to incubation. Uh, I think we will see this high velocity in projects more and more. Um, and maybe the, the criteria need to be adjusted here or how we communicate about projects. Because like for open telemetry from, from somebody actively working with the tracing part, even if the rest never materializing, the project in itself has value and has, has adoption. Well, actually the, the metrics part I know it's also adopted by um, very big end user organizations already. Uh, just the logging part is not there. So, so I think we have some, that's also why we have like tech leads and the DOC to assess technical risk of things not actually turning out. The, the other risk is that we won't find people, and the other is organizational risk, nobody actually working on it. Well, logs do not exist. I think how to write a logging signal library Excuse my hard feedback. It's not like really rocket science here. This has been done before. It's not just standardized there, and it might take longer from an organization point to find people to actually work on it and to have like the, the overall agreement. But I think that a lot of this is really in the assessment. It's a, a bit of a gray zone, and we will just see this higher velocity. Like for our goals, that like the key parts of the project are already mature enough. For Flux, they have a very good plan to move from version one to version two. There's a lot of industry momentum in there. People are already already moving there. I think there is no hard criteria, and I think the standard project criteria do not really help that much here. And like technical vision and technical stability of the ideas behind it is is not really even a, a criteria for the project. Maybe that's something to add in there to at least have a statement of assessment by whoever is reviewing it. I think we should probably um, move on because we'll we'll run out of time for the other six. But um, I hope I think that was a useful discussion, and I hope that's sort of set some 
thinking in place for sick observability folks. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Great. Sick runtime. Hey, hello everyone. Well, okay, so we've been having presentations. Uh, we had a couple of presentations last month. Um, so some updates on some of the projects that I had mentioned on the previous meeting. So we had um, on the containers and runtime space, Sysbox is a project that allows you to run uh, containers uh, in VM or, or they containers that look like VMs. Uh, so it allows you to run full workloads that would run in VMs with system D and you can even run uh, Kubernetes clusters inside the uh, container. Uh, so pretty interesting project. They had a presentation uh, early uh, last month. So another project that presented is Trout and that's um, container image uh, registry uh, and the difference uh, with some of the other registries uh, that are around is that this one is written in Rust. So they're targeting use cases that are looking for uh, kind of faster, uh, lighter weight uh, image registry. Maybe people running container registries in Kubernetes uh, clusters. So yeah, they presented at, at our last meeting um, and it's still in the works and this is from the folks in from container solutions. So uh, another project, so there's a few projects on the WebAssembly runtime sp space. Uh, we are going to have another presentation for SSBM. This is from backed by a company from uh, the name is uh, Second State. So it's a uh, uh, WebAssembly virtual machine. So pretty excited to have them presenting our uh, second meeting our, um, on Thursday. Another project that uh, we reached out to was, is WABM. Uh, they uh, replied to our invitation and they're also looking at presenting um, a, another uh, uh, runtime or WebAssembly runtime. In, in, and I think their focus is um, on having high performance uh, workloads. Other uh, WebAssembly runtimes, we have Wasmer, Swam, uh, and Wasmtime. Uh, some of them we reached out. Uh, um, Wasmtime hasn't replied yet, so um, but hopefully, you know, we get uh, that to present at, at some point. In the operating system space, uh, in uh, the meeting next this month, uh, the, not the one Thursday, but the one after that, we're gonna have a REST CTL. Uh, it's a project from the folks at uh, Facebook. And this is a project that allows you to um, uh, manage the resources on a system uh, based on metrics. So things like um, number of requests or uh, latency on, on some of the uh, requests that are, that our server is actually receiving uh, and, and adjusting that dynamically. And this project is also written in Rust. So another interesting project presenting. And then finally on the IoT and Edge space, we're still talking to K3S. They're already a CNCF project. So we'll have them present at some point in the future. And as far as uh, other SIG uh, runtime activities, uh, our container orchestrated uh, device work group, uh, they've had some meetings and they they are working on, on uh, container device imp implementation in, in, in beta and they're gonna have that with uh, Podman. And, and they're also working on the same, uh, but integrating that that, in, that implementation with Kubernetes. So some progress there on the work group. And, and, and I had a meeting, we had a meeting with uh, uh, our new TOC liaison. So, uh, so uh, Alina uh, is one of them. And then so our new TOC liaison is Ricardo Rocha. So the other Ricardo. And 
yeah, so we, we had a conversation about, uh, you know, some of the projects that we're working on and uh, or that we're reaching out to and, and, and some ideas on how to uh, um, help get more engagement uh, with the SIG and with the, with the CNCF. And some related events, uh, so we're going to have a KubeCon EU session and there's uh, three events that are not per se directly related to SIG runtime, but they, you know there's some relation uh, with some of the projects. For example, uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, on the edge date. Uh, there's Cloud Native Wasm date, and and there's also Cloud Native Rust date. Uh, in, yeah, that's that's all the updates that I have for SIG runtime. And happy to take any questions. See if you have any. Oh, SIG Ricardo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like Double Ricardo, right? <laughs> I think there's something very interesting about the fact that there are all these, you know, uh, co-located events, these side events for KubeCon going on in the runtime area. It seems like a really rich scene yes. of activity. Very cool. It's pretty exciting. It's a, uh, and yeah, hopefully that, that actually helps the SIG and uh, the ecosystem grow and, and take it forward. Any other questions for Ricardo? Okay, let's move on. SIG Security. Hello, everyone. Um, some quick updates for you all today. We have the Secure Supply Chain Working Group, issue number 510. They are rapidly moving forward with a supply chain security white paper. It's been scoped. We have a documented schedule, and we're looking for a final release of that paper before KubeCon. So keep an eye out for a call for community review. We'll be sending that out to our SIG uh, list as well as probably the CNCF list. We were successfully able to merge the translation of the Cloud Native Security white paper into Chinese. This is a really awesome thing for the community. We also now have APAC region biweekly meetings. It's been going extremely well. We're seeing a significant amount of growth from that community, as well as this, an increase in the amount of contributions as a result of those meetings. We're also going to be starting a serverless security um, research white paper, so see a call to action coming out about that soon. We're going to start work on the cloud native security map. So this is a interactive edition of the cloud native security white paper. Um, we're going to also be sending out a call to action for that, requesting both content and development opportunities from the community to contribute to this really awesome effort. But the biggest update of all is that we have updated our process based off of the past five security assessments that have been performed and the feedback from the projects that underwent those assessments. We're now calling them security reviews to avoid a lot of the confusion that community experienced going through this. But we've also made some changes to the overall process to better align with the maturity level of projects moving through the CNCF ecosystem. So we've got some big updates there, lots of changes. Please check out the changes in our repo under the assessments readme. And we also have a current proposal to more formally align these new changes with the CNCF phases, and that's under PR 534. That's everything. Thank you, Emily. Any questions from anyone? All right, SIG storage. Good morning. Um, so we had a discussion last time um, that we were that we needed to kind of spec out the, the SIG. Um, we had been looking for uh, some new tech lead uh, for the for the sake for a while um we'd like to nominate uh two tech leads one is um raffaele uh, spazzoli um who uh works with red hat has a lot of um uh, has a lot of background in uh kubernetes of course and storage 
and has uh, recently been authoring um, a cloud native uh, DR document uh, in the SIG. Um, and also, uh, we'd like to nominate Sheng Yang, who's um, uh, an engineering manager with, with Suzy, formerly Rancher. Um, and he's also the, the uh, maintainer, one of the maintainers for the um, for the Longhorn project. Sheng, again, has a lot of uh, background in, in storage, um, is, is a really strong technical lead and has been um, involved in the SIG for um, probably a couple of years, honestly, since, since we first started. Um, so, so we'd like to nominate these uh, these two uh, people for a tech lead. I'm going to follow up with an email to the TOC mailing list, or perhaps um, I don't know if this should be another one of those that goes into a, um, a GitHub issue for voting. But I'll I'll take your lead on that. And um, is the co-chair of the storage SIG? I second the nomination. I think they're both great candidates and contribute a lot to the community. So I fully support it. Thanks, Aaron. Wonderful. Um, awesome. Hopefully so we can get that closed off for you, uh, you know, with a, in a vote very quickly. That would be brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, we have um, another slide with, with a few more updates. Um, so the, the Longhorn project, um, we really need to kick off the DD process. Um, I need to follow up with, um, with Saad on that. Um, Chabo FS are currently in Sandbox. They are proposing to, um, to move to incubation. They presented to the SIG um, just last week. We're, we're getting together to, um, to review a few of the items. Um, and we should be able to make a recommendation shortly. Um, and open EBS is um, still under discussion, um, but we haven't we haven't moved forward with that. Um, one of the main topics that we're working on is a um, is a disaster recovery, uh, a cloud native disaster recovery um, document, which, um, as I mentioned, Raffaele was working on. He's he's also produced um, a pr an overview presentation which kind of helps with the with the documents we're covering um, lots of uh, lots of uh, uh, areas including you know some really uh, sort of technically um, hard stuff like you know different consensus algorithms but also you know different ways of deploying databases across um, uh, for for disaster recovery and covering some of the cloud native ways as well as some of the legacy ways of doing them um, to, to, to provide that overview. So, so hopefully this will be something that will be really useful um, for, for uh, sort of uh, end users going forward. Um, the project Vineyard um, uh, presented to the SIG, they plan to submit to the sandbox. I imagine it will be on the March 23rd um, session. Um, so that should be coming up for, for a vote. Um, and finally, the performance and benchmarking white paper has has stalled for the last few weeks because we've been busy on a bunch of other stuff. Um, but but hopefully we'll get that finalised before um, and, and and published before KubeCon. And that's me. Great. Um, any questions? for Alex and SIG storage. Okay. All right. Um, I have one other little thing from a couple of weeks ago. I said I would draft a um, proposed wording for adding the requirement for having some sort of documented security process um, at incubation level. And I'm just gonna stick the link to that into the chat in case anyone has any comments. I think this is the right one. So take that at your leisure. Any other questions or any other business?
Oh, did we have anybody from uh, contributor experience? We did, but I don't believe they've got anything. Do you want to say hello or, or no, no need? <laughs> I think the only other thing to bring up is the uh, Michelle seat is coming up for availability. So the TSC is going to select a new person to replace her. I think we've, oh. we've got some nominations and the qualification process is underway, right? Yep. Yep. Should be a couple of weeks. So just give people a heads up. Terrific. All right. Unless anyone has any late breaking Thoughts or comments, we'll call it a day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.